welcome to episode 30 of the Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. I was literally on a podcast with a friend of ours, uh, Mary Morantz, and her show is called The Mary Morantz Show. So we're joking about how our shows are narcissistically named, but hey, maybe I'm just not that creative. But you're here at The Graham Cochran Show, and we do talk about online business That's what this show is all about, Um, so that you can work less, so that you can live more and give more to the things and people you care about. And today, in this episode, we're going to talk about the working less part. Specifically, I want to cast the vision for you um, that it's possible for you to run your business in five hours a week. Uh, this has really been popularized by Tim Ferriss in his amazing book that came out in 2007, I think, The 4-Hour Work Week, which is just a great name, by the way, as a play on the 40-Hour Work Week, which is more of a metaphor, a concept, a way of thinking about business. So it's not necessarily about running your business in four hours. If you actually read the book, which a lot of people don't, but if you actually read the book, you'll realize that it's a book about lifestyle and goals and having um a purpose behind your business as opposed to just making as much money as possible. So it's a really freeing book if you read it. Really, really well thought out. In actuality, though, my first business, The Recording Revolution, because I run two businesses, this one and The Recording Revolution. The Recording Revolution, I run in less than five hours a week. So I actually was able to turn that business into a four-hour work week type business. And I was just on a coaching call with some of my six-figure coaching community students and every month we're diving in, answering their questions every, every day, really, inside the community. But on our live coaching call, one of them asked, Graham, how do you actually run your business in five hours a week? And more specifically, what do you actually do in those five hours? And I love this question because this person is trying to have a vision for whether it's five hours a week for his business or just working fewer hours Uh, than he's currently working, he wants to think about it and actually visualize it. And before you just knock any idea as like, well, that's that's never going to be happening for me. That's not possible for me. Uh, That's not even something I should even want. Like, it's worth considering interesting ideas that come across your table and just considering them. That's literally it. Considering, is that something that I value? Is that something that would help me in my life? Is that something that I want? And if it is, how do I get there? So instead of being cynical and saying that's impossible, which if you watch my review of the four-hour workweek book in particular, I share the story of what happens when I first bought that book in 2007 when I was still working a corporate America job. Um, the hint there in the short stories is it seemed like an impossibility to me. I, I couldn't even imagine that being possible. So if you can't even believe it, you're not going to pursue it. But just because something seems interesting or impossible or different or you don't know how to get there doesn't mean it's not possible for you. But if it's something you don't value, then it doesn't matter. So if you don't care about working fewer hours, then this conversation probably is irrelevant to you. But I know from speaking with many of you that you might either be trying to get out of a job that you hate or isn't a good fit, if that's less harsh language, um, to free up your, have a business so you can free up your time a little bit, or many of you actually have a business, but the business now demands more of you than your previous day job did. And so you're still working a ton. I mean, some of the best entrepreneurs I know in terms of output, in terms of impressive numbers, work way more hours than the average wage employee. Now, that's, to me, not the goal of life. Um, here in Tampa, one of the the biggest movers and shakers in the business world and in the community is a guy named Jeff Vinnick. He owns the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they play in Amelie Arena right down the street. Um, that's the hockey team here. Uh, he moved down here from Boston a few years ago, bought the Lightning. He was a hedge fund manager, sort of a star darling investor, uh, and and made his fortune in uh, hedge funds. And he now is buying up a lot of real estate in downtown, and he's changing the community down here. He's an amazing guy, 
super philanthropic, an amazing guy. But I recently read an article in our paper here in the Tampa Bay Times that he works, to this day, he works 100 hours a week. I about fell out of my breakfast chair. I'm drinking my coffee, reading my paper. And yes, I get an actual physical newspaper. And I thought, this guy is 60 years old, maybe 62. I mean, a hundred hours a week. Supposedly he loves it. Now, if he loves it, that's great. But let's come on, guys. A hundred hours a week. That's not even that's not even a goal to shoot for, whether you love your work or not. That a hundred hours a week, what is that? Like if you do the math on six days a week, guys, I'm I just haven't had enough coffee today. So let's do this. 100 hours divided by, let's say he takes one day off. Let's say he takes Sunday off. That He's having to work over 16 hours a day, six days a week to rack up 100 hours. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that leaves you like what? Eight hours a day to, to sleep, eat, go to the bathroom, spend time with your family, exercise, do anything. <laughs> anything other than work, that's insane. So uh, everyone has their own goals, but come on, that's ridiculous. Um, I, We all make choices. I personally, when I'm in my 60s, do, I do not intend to be working 100 hours a week, ever, at any point in my life. When I'm in my 60s, I don't intend to be working 40 hours a week. Um, I don't work 40 hours a week now, and I'm in my mid-30s. To me, and I'm going to get into four steps of how you can actually run your business in five hours a week. We're not just going to talk about it. Or I'm going to give you literally how I do it and what I do because it is very possible. It's not going to happen overnight. But to me, one of my goals has been how can I run this business as efficiently as possible? And there's a couple reasons why. One, if I can run my business in a few hours a week, my internal hourly rate of return goes up. So if I'm making let's say $10,000 a month and it takes me 100 hours a week to pull that off, that's only that's a certain amount of money I'm getting per hour. But if I can make the same $10,000 a month in only 10 hours a week, well, I've 10xed my hourly pay basically. My you know, my pay is the same, but like my hours become worth more if I can do it in less time. So part of that is a fascinating game to me is seeing how much I can increase my internal rate of return for my hourly pay. But then part of it is, look, there's other things to my life other than my business and now businesses. They are a huge part of my life and I don't just run them just to make money. I run, I, I believe in the missions of both of my businesses um, and, I, and I believe that they're both a calling. I believe they also both give me a platform to, to speak to people like you, to influence the world in the best sense of the word. I mean, influencers these days are just pitching products, but I think influence is truly trying to shape people and trying to help people when you are given a, a megaphone or a voice. And so I have a small little megaphone or small little voice in these two corners of the internet, you know, the audio space and now the business space. And so I'm going to manage and steward those opportunities as well as I possibly can for God's glory and the good of people. But there's other things in life that are important to me other than, than doing this. And those are being able to take my kids to school and pick them up. They are being able to have dinner with my family every night. They are being able to exercise regularly. Um, they are being able to rest and enjoy time with my family. Also have time to rest and enjoy sort of me time where it's just me doing what I like to do. Um, time to sleep, time to go to church, time to have Bible study at my house on a Wednesday night, time to um, read my Bible, time to um, just go to coffee with friends, time to travel, time to um, serve someone in my community. Like there's also, I spend time on calls with people I'm connecting with, friendships I'm making. There's groups of entrepreneurs that I'm a part of to be encouraged, to be inspired, to learn. All of these things take time and none of them are work hours. So if I filled my week with work, and believe me, I could, I could, and we're going to get into that in just a second, I could fill every waking hour of my life with work because it never ends. There's a million things that I could be, should be doing. 
But if I did that, I wouldn't have time to live my life. And so to me, I want to find this optimal balance where I'm working enough to accomplish what I want to in my business, but also working um, fewer, a few enough amount of hours that I have enough life left over to live the things that are important to me. So let's get specific. Let's talk about how could you run your business in five hours a week? There's four steps to make this happen. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next month. It may not even happen next year. It certainly didn't for me. Again, I won't promise you quick, but I'll promise you clarity and I'll give you the steps. But if you're into this, if you're saying, I don't want to be running my business, scrambling 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours a week, I actually want to, you know, cut it down to 20 hours a week. I just want to work half days. That's a great goal. Here's how you do it. You ready? Okay. This is, this is where it gets fun. So a lot of this I've learned over the years, again, from guys like Tim Ferriss, um, the, uh, the book Essentialism, Greg McCown, um, just even um, Richard Cox, um, the 80-20 principle, which a lot of that is what influenced Tim Ferriss is the four-hour work week. I mean, these guys are brilliant in terms of the way they think about focusing on what matters. Because at the end of the day, here's the reality. Everyone is doing all the things, hashtag all the things. And the problem with running a business in this modern social media age is that there's so many more people you can be stalking and watching. And what you do to yourself when you do that is you create more burdens for yourself. Oh, crap, I should be running Facebook ads. Man, I need to be uh, doing cool videos on Instagram. I need to have a YouTube channel also because that's what that person does. Man, she's really funny on Twitter. I need to have a podcast. I need to, you're seeing what other people are doing. And so you feel like you need to do those things as well. Or you see that person, you have Instagram, they have Instagram, but they post every day and you post a couple of times a week. Or you're trying to post every day and they're posting two or three times a day. Um, whatever it is, you're seeing all the people do all the things. So that is a pressure that we didn't have 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, also, there's just, we're living in a culture where there's so much um, emphasis on grow as quick as you can, as big as you can. Like there's like the whole YOLO thing, you only live once, like time is running out. Whether it's explicitly communicated in culture, which it is at times, or more implicitly felt, we, all of us, myself included, feel the pressure to grow this thing now, like, like as if we have no other time, no day but today. Like I love the musical Rent, right? I love the song, No Day But Today. And I can appreciate some of that carpe diem, seize the day kind of uh, mentality because if you're lazy, if you're just waiting for life to happen, it's not going to happen. It is happening. You need to be an intentional person if you want life change to happen. But the we make a jump from intentionality and taking action, which I think are all great things, all the good things in my life that I can point to being related to myself have come from intentionality and action and taking making effort. But we make a leap from be intentional to you got to do it all and you got to do it all now. Those are two lies. One, you don't need to do it all. We're about to talk about that. And two, you certainly don't need to do it all now. So the lie of you have to do it all now, I, I guess it's a cultural thing. We feel like, man, if I'm ever going to start a business, it's got to be right now. Says who? If I'm ever going to have this business hit my financial goals, it's got to be right now. Says who? I mean, what is the pressure? Why does it have to happen right now? I mean, sure, I I would love all the things I'm working towards to happen sooner rather than later, but why? Why do I need them to? I don't know. But we, a lot of times we don't stop and ask that question. So there is a lot of pressure to do all the things and do them all now, but that will never go away unless you say otherwise. If I gave in to the reality of here's all the things I think I should be doing. I just got to get them all done and get them all done now. I would never be able to run my business in five hours a week. I would never have had the time to run the second business. Like I would not have time to do this podcast for you, right? I put out a podcast every single week for free. I don't have any sponsors. I don't get paid to do a podcast. Yes, it's part of my business model, but there's no guarantee that I will get paid for the time I sit in this chair and talk to you for 45 minutes to an hour every single week. I can do this because I'm financially compensated on my other business to free me up to do this without any pressure for this to perform. Now, 
I've learned a lot about online business and I'm really blessed to have turned this into a business as well. So I do make money on this side of things as well. And I'm very, very happy with that. But I started this business with no money, no, nothing to sell, no products. But I knew I could because I had all this free time during the week. And it was a matter of how do I want to spend that free time? And I felt it was my next mission to start a platform to teach everything I know about online business um, to a world that wants the freedom and flexibility of a business, but they're being lied to from a bunch of the big gurus in the space that you got to hustle, hustle, hustle. You got to work harder than anybody else. You got to sacrifice a lot of things in order to achieve your financial goals. And none of that's true. So because of business one being super efficient and me choosing to not do all the things, I have the time to do this for you. If I believe the lie that I got to do all the things in the recording revolution, there's people that are doing things way better than me at the rec in that space. They're making more content. They're doing more things. I just have to say, sorry, I'm not going to do those things because I want the free time to do other things. So it starts with you having the, and I said this on the podcast a few weeks ago, having the cojones to say, no, no, I'm not going to do all the things. Step one, and now let's get super practical. Step one to running your business in five hours a week is to eliminate just about everything in your business that's unnecessary, that is non-essential right? To borrow the language from Greg McCown's Essentialism, which is a great book, by the way. Uh, you want to ignore the trivial many and only do the vital few. Okay? You've got the trivial many. There's many things. Most things in life, and especially in your business, are trivial. What does trivial mean? Meaningless, not really amounting to much. They might feel good to get it done, like we talked about getting to inbox zero a few weeks ago. Waste of your time, right? It feels good to clear out your inbox. Does that put money in your pocket? No. So that's time wasted on an activity that makes you feel like you accomplished something, but it's the wrong thing to accomplish, right? That's, that describes a lot of what happens in business. Posting to social media a lot, um, uh, doing email, inbox zero, um, tweaking the, the fonts and the colors and the buttons and the layout on your website, like all of these things are the trivial many. Like there are a million things that you could be doing that could help and some might, but most don't. And those are unending. So step one is being able to have the courage to eliminate those things and only do the vital few. And there's a reason why they're called vital few. A, they're vital. They are the things that actually are important to your business not closing and important to your business growing and putting money in your pocket. Uh, and there's really few of them. There's not. There's really not many things that are vital to your business, especially if you run an online business, okay? Again, I'm speaking to online business owners, hopeful online business owners, but hear me when I say, you will never run your business in five hours a week or 20 hours a week or 30 or whatever your, your initial goal is if you're still trying to do all the things. And, and here's the thing. Everyone is going to tell you to do all the things. And if you're looking at other online business owners or any other business owner, it's going to look like they're doing all the things because guess what? They're trying to do all the things. And if you try to copy them, you're going to end up just like them. And you know what they're, they're like? They're burned out. They don't see their family. They're stressed out. They're uh, unhealthy. And chances are really high that they're actually not very profitable. That's the sad reality. If they were scrambling and, and working 100 hours a week but making millions, there would at least be some silver lining. And I don't even think that's worth it to give up 100 hours a week of your life or 80 or 60 or even 40, in my opinion, is too much. To give up 40 hours of your week to make millions, I don't know if that's even worth it. But the reality is most of these people aren't making that much money. That's the whole problem with copying. Like, look, you could copy whatever you see me doing, but if I'm not actually making money, how does that help you, right? That's why I try to talk about revenue. That's why I try to share like kind of where I'm at revenue-wise because otherwise, why pay attention to me? If I'm not successful in my business, why should you listen to me? You know, there's plenty of people that can just, throw up a microphone and talk to you about what you should or shouldn't do, but are they successful? Are they doing the things you want to do, right? So most of the people out there that are doing the latest Instagram strategy, the latest, you know, Facebook chat bot, the latest whatever, are they making money? Most of them aren't. 
So why are we even copying them if they're not even making money? But even if they are, do you want that lifestyle? It takes a lot of work to do all the things. Like there's, there's no, I know people want productivity hacks and what I think they want is someone to tell them how to do all the things but do them faster. And I'm here to tell you that's, a, that's impossible. The only way to be more productive and have more time is to stop doing all the things. It's like the most simplest math. It's like all the fitness people and all the weight loss people, if I'm overweight, I'm unhealthy, I want to be told, hey, here's the secret to eating pizza and donuts and losing weight. That's what I want to be told. I want to be able to eat all the things and still get the result. And so I'm looking for like a secret. Is, is there a time of day I should be eating donuts? Is there, should I eat pizza after I've had a glass of water so that I lose weight? Like that's ridiculous, right? This is ridiculous. But we want the same thing in business with productivity. Okay, Graham or whoever, I'm gonna get on YouTube, find, help me to know how to do all the things, but do them faster and have all this free time. And I'm never gonna tell you that that's possible because that's impossible. The only way to have free time is to stop doing things. Just like the only way to lose weight is to stop eating crap. You have to, you have to literally stop eating as much food as you were eating before. It's not just food swaps, although it's not that you'd wanna starve yourself either, but you really have to eat fewer calories than you burn, right? So, I mean, it's, it's really simple math. So step one is the hardest of them all, and that's eliminate. And you eliminate by really having a good hard look at all the things you do every single week in your business. And I would want you to sit down and start to bullet out. What do you do every week? Because you're going to think of a few things immediately, but there's a lot of things you haven't thought of. Well, yeah, I got I interact with that person. Or I have to upload this thing or I have to do this. So write down every single thing you do as bullets. Write a blog post, edit a blog post, schedule a blog post, schedule an email, shoot a video, have a video edited. Like whatever you do, write it down post to Instagram every day, post to Facebook, I'm on Twitter, do a Facebook Live, write down everything you're currently doing so you can see it all. And then what I want you to do is have the guts to look at that list and say which of these directly lead to revenue. Now, some might be trickier. Like for me, I know that shooting a video, let's say for the Recording Revolution, directly leads to revenue. How? Because of the way I've set up my business. Every video I put out, it gets traffic, it gets eyeballs. That video leads to a lead magnet, which people want to download. So they opt in and they give me their email address. Once they're giving me their email address, they're presented with more content, including auto webinars, uh, emails with about products that I have. Those lead to sales. So I know if I backtrack, sales come from people being pitched in my email list. So people being pitched on my email list comes from new people on my email list. How do I get new people on my email list? I have to pitch my lead magnet. How do I pitch my lead magnet? I got to put out more content. So that backtracks me to saying fresh content is a direct correlation with revenue. So content is so important as opposed to answering emails in my inbox. Those do not directly lead to revenue 99 times out of 100, right? Posting to Instagram could lead to revenue if it leads to an email opt-in but nine times out of 10, it doesn't. It's not as engaging as a piece of content. Um, and it's not as a high use of my time because a post on Instagram gets lost in the feed 24 hours later. A YouTube video is evergreen. It's being searched every single day. There's more potential for a video that I shot a year ago to be growing and getting me more traffic a year from now than if I did the same amount of work on an Instagram post. So you have to figure out what of the activities you do truly lead to revenue. The helpful question I always ask, and I stole this from Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week because it, it frames it really succinctly is, imagine you have a heart attack, the doctors bring you back, and the great news is you will live, but doctor's orders are you can only work two hours a day on your business. Any more than that, and you're gonna jeopardize your health. Two hours a day is all you can work five days a week on your business. Doctor's orders for your health or you will die. What would you do in those two hours a day to keep your business afloat, keep revenue coming in? That's the question you want to be asking. The follow-up question to that is, a month later, you have a second heart attack. You're in a super fragile state, and the doctor says, doctor's orders, you can only work two hours a week to keep your business afloat. What would you do? No, you, you, you can't even, you can't squeeze in another after you literally only had two hours. Literally, what would you do in those two hours to keep revenue coming in? 
whatever comes to mind initially, those are your money-making endeavors. Those are the, the vital few. That's how you need to start to orient your week. And then you need to have the courage to begin to eliminate most of everything else, the trivial many. So for me, with the Recording Revolution, I started to eliminate a lot of things that weren't the highest, best use of my time. For example, content is really important to me. I love content. I used to put out three pieces of content a week. But as the years went on, I started to experiment with how little content, how much little, how little content can I put out and still generate the same amount of traffic. So I would start to cut back a piece of content a week and see over a few months, does traffic dip? Does it not dip? And I started to figure out a sweet spot. And I also started to eliminate the written posts on the Recording Revolution. So if you've been following the Recording Revolution for years, you will have seen an evolution of a couple of written posts a week in one video, to just one written post a week in one video, to no written posts and just a video. So the videos have stayed constant. And that's because I started to realize, well, the video traffic on YouTube is what's generating most of my leads, what's generating most of my sales. 80-20, I would love to have all of it. But if I really want to free up time, I need to eliminate the written posts and just focus on video. That's been really good for that brand, okay? And so having the courage to stop doing things that were really helpful. I've got some massive blog posts. I have a ton of comments that quote unquote went viral in my space, but I stopped writing articles and just focus on videos a few years ago as a way to eliminate the things that were okay and good in favor of just the vital few to keep revenue going. Again, Gun to my head, doctor's orders, two hours a week. What would I do? I'd probably just shoot a video, okay? So that's a huge part of it is eliminating. Get out of email, get out of social media posting that's not necessary, get out of content that's not a good use of your time. Focus on the things that drive your business. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Step two is automate. So you eliminate the things that truly aren't necessary for your business. Have the courage to say no to all the things. Be the weirdo. Um, because it works. But the second step is the things that you cannot eliminate that are essential to your business. Um, Can you automate them? That's a great question. Are there tools out there that can automate? So for example, I found myself always feeling like, okay, I would write an article or shoot a video uh, and then I needed to um, post it to Twitter. I needed to... um, email it out. I need it. So yes, so does Twitter and Facebook and all, getting it on social media. That was the thing. It's like, it's up on YouTube. I got a blog post. How do we, I got to put it on YouTube or Facebook. I put it on Twitter. Uh, and then I had multiple Twitter accounts, multiple Facebook accounts with the two brands. I was like, this, this is just a waste of my time. Is there a way to automate this? And yes, there are tools that can do this. Like later, um, Edgar, I use Edgar where it just pulls my, my uh, RSS feed off of my blog for both brands and it sees every time I have a new post and it tweets it. It can post it to Instagram or Facebook and now Instagram if you want. So you can have this one tool, just take your post the moment it goes live and push it to social media. I don't think it's the best long-term social media strategy. I think you should probably do other things than that, but it's a great way to get all your latest posts out without you having to do it because it's an automated tool that I can pay for and it's the robot does it. So what can you automate? I automate the sales process entirely. I don't do a ton of launches. I don't do a ton of promotions. I sell a good majority of my um, products to an automated email funnel that new subscribers go through, meaning I wrote a series of emails once years ago, and then now every minute of every day when someone joins my email list, they're going through an automation that adds value, brings them fresh new content that's exclusive, and pitches products that they have a choice to buy or not buy, and that puts revenue in my pocket. So I've automated the sales process as opposed to just collecting emails and having to run a promotion all the time. Now, I still run promotions, but I don't need to for consistent revenue. Automate the sales process. So what things can you automate? There are so many more tools and apps now that might be able to automate a lot of what you do. So eliminate the things you don't need, the trivial many automate what's left. And then step three, whatever you can't eliminate, so meaning it's super important, can't automate, so there's no way a robot can do it yet, you got to delegate if you can. And this comes down to the things that are important, that need to be done, but they don't necessarily need to be done by you. I talk about this a lot. The biggest thing I delegated, the first thing I delegated was email. Uh, And 
this took me forever to come to this realization. Like I, I say it with pride now because it's changed my life, but I'm telling you for five years, yeah, four or five years, I did all the email myself, all the customer service myself, all the refund requests, all the, my download link is broken, all the questions about products, all the gram, what's the best rap microphone for male vocalists between the age of 35 and 40? Like I answered all of those emails myself. And I prided myself on being available to my students to answer every email. And that works when you have a small audience. It's great. In fact, it's a great idea to do. Ramit Sethi says something that I love, like in the beginning of your business, do things that aren't scalable, you know, do things that aren't scalable in the beginning. My wife, Shay used to write handwritten thank you notes to each new customer of her uh, stock photography shop. Every time someone put in an order, she would write a hand note on a card and mail it. That was not scalable long-term, but it was easy to do at the beginning and it was a nice touch. So those are great things to do. And for me, that was emailing back every person that emailed me in the beginning. But it got to a point where I was spending hours in my inbox and I've talked about this a lot. Three hours a day, easy, four hours a day sometimes. When you're getting hundreds of emails a day, that's it's just a huge part of your day. I wasn't having time to build products or even put out free content for the world. So it took me a lot to eventually be convinced, like, what if I hired somebody? And the thought was, is no one can do this. No one can respond to these emails like me. And what if all my, if my audience gets angry because it's not me? And you know what? Some people did get angry, but you know what? <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. And it took me a while to realize that. But I hired it out. And for the last six years, I've had three different people now because people have moved on. But I have someone who answers my emails. Start with that automation. I have an autoresponder on my Recording Revolution emails. So if someone gets a robot, everyone gets a robot email from me that I've pre-written that's very helpful. And so that happens first. Two, I have an assistant who's in there every single day, Monday through Friday, who's responding to customer service inquiries, helping you get your login if you needed a refund or if you had a question about a product or whatever. He's doing a lot of that. And then he's deleting the angry emails for me so I don't see them. And he's curating content, labeling things. So when I get in there each day, and sometimes I don't even get there each day, um, I only have like 15, 20 minutes of email and I just answer the ones that only I can answer um, and I respond to the nice people and things like that. So that was a huge hire. I delegated a task that was vital, that is vital, will always be vital. You need customer service. You need to be able to respond to emails, but I didn't need to do it. So you need to ask yourself, what are the things that you're doing right now that are vital to your business and vital to revenue coming in, but you actually don't need to do? Could you delegate them? Could you? Are they one-offs? Are you, are you still editing your own podcast? Are you still doing your own artwork? Are you still uh, tweaking your website? These are all things that you could hire out on Fiverr or Upwork, or you could get on Facebook in a Facebook group and say, hey, who here does you know podcast editing? Find someone that does that. Like You could do that with a contractor. Uh, you don't need employees, right? You don't need W2 employees that are working 40 hours a week for you. Think just a few hours a week that they could you could unload something off of your shoulders, give to somebody else, pay them, but you buy back hours of your time. And again, the more you optimize your business, the more your time is worth. So it's worth paying someone a few hundred bucks to save you thousands of dollars of your hours, right? If your hours are worth a lot more. So delegating, and then this can expand to many, many things, right? Um, it can expand to marketing team. It can expand to uh, design work and it, it can expand to a content manager. It can expand to all kinds of things, but just start with one. What's one task that you could delegate to somebody? Maybe just editing your videos, you know? What's one little task you could dip your toes in the water and get the baby steps of testing out delegating someone just as a contractor? Like, I'll pay you this amount per hour, this amount per project to get this done and create a relationship with that person. That's a good step. So you eliminate most things. You automate what you can. You delegate the rest. And what's left over for you is the only things that you can do or things that only you can do, the things that you must do, if at all possible, this fourth and final step is to batch those things. If you're doing them every week or every day, you're having to start and start up every single time. The same, the same amount of energy is being used to get started that if you were to batch those processes together, you could save a lot of time and mental energy. I'll give you an example. For me, I put out content every single week on both brands, Recording Revolution and here at Graham Cochran. These podcasts, for example, I don't shoot them every single week. I batch them, okay? I take a day or two and I film a whole month's worth of content, right? I do that for the Recording Revolution. I do that for this brand. So that in two days, 
I'm done for the month of content. Why would I do that? Well, uh, practically, I only have to set up my camera and my microphone and my computer and my notes once. Um, I only have to set up lighting if I have lighting once. I don't have to set it up four times if there's four pieces of content, right? I can just focus on doing it one time. Two, there's the mental energy, right? To be mentally focused to do this, I only have to get in that space one day a month or two days a month or whatever it is. And I can stay in that zone and deliver content as opposed to like, all right, next week I got to get in that zone again. And the next week I got to get in that zone again. Some weeks you're just not in that zone. So if you can get a week where you're batching it and you're focused, you can put out a lot of content. So that's a way I batch things as well. I also batch email. I talked about this in the Inbox Zero episode a few episodes ago, I think 24. Um, I don't do, I don't leave email open all day long, or I don't respond to emails when they come in. I don't have any email push notifications. I only do email in a batch in the middle of the day or the end of the day. I just sit down in one block of time. So I'm thinking about email only once. I'm opening it only once and just do the emails that are there. And I wait for all of them to accumulate for 24 hours and then I'll look at them tomorrow. You're more focused. You get more done. You save time when you batch. So what does this, all this look like for me? How do I run my business in five hours a week? What does it actually look like for the Recording Revolution? Here's what it looks like. Those five hours a week are an average because there's a little bit more on the first week of the month. But the first week of the month, I batch my videos for the Recording Revolution. Right now, it's four videos a month, one a week. So I'll film all four videos, ship them off to the editor. There's the delegation. He edits them, gets them back. When they're back, my assistant puts them on the blog, puts them on YouTube, schedules them for Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff right? That's delegation as well. Um, schedules the emails, all that stuff. So all I'm doing is filming one day, a uh, batch process. And then throughout the, the weeks going on, I have a couple of ongoing tasks. One is email. So I'm in email probably only two times a week, honestly, for the recording revolution these days. And usually at about 30 minutes a, pl- uh, a, a time. So that's about an hour a week. I have two membership sites on the Recording Revolution brand. And so one of those requires ongoing content, creating and filming. Um, and the other, and then both of them, the other is just a one live Q&A call a month. Um, and the other has a Q&A call a month. So I've got those live calls. Um, so it's literally two live calls, original content for the one membership, email about an hour a week, uh, and then batch filming my four videos. If you add all that up, it's less than 20 hours a month. So there's the five hours a week average. Some weeks, I don't have to do really anything for the Recording Revolution. There can be a week where I don't literally do a single thing. The reason this is possible is partly because of the business model, right? The business model that I teach every single week on the show, I'm mentioning it every single week on the show. I share it in my my passive income workshop that I'm going to mention at the end of this, but I run my business so that it's not dependent on me. It's largely automated. Content goes out in the world. The content is always drawing traffic and leads and always working for me. It's it's doing my marketing for me. It's saying, hey, check this out. It's inviting people in. It's proven to work. Content marketing is just the best model out there to get eyeballs. And then it pushes people to my email list through a lead magnet. And that's all automated. And it adds value and sells and money goes in my bank account. So it does not require me to be present as long as there's content out there. So I commit to content every single week. And then the responsibilities I have to paid customers and staying engaged with my audience. Uh, and so I didn't, I didn't include, I respond to blog comments as well. And then answering questions inside of the back end of my products for my students uh, every week. So it's sort of those ongoing things that, that I do have to be present for, but it's largely automated. It's largely hands off. When I started the Recording Revolution, it took me 32 hours a week of work, but I've gotten that down to less than five. And that's because I've been committing to these four things every year. It didn't happen overnight, but every year I focus on what can I eliminate? What can I automate? What can I delegate? And then should I be batching this? Like for the longest time, I did not batch my videos. Like for years, I still did it on a weekly basis. And I had people saying, Graham, why are you still doing that? Why don't you batch it? I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. And it wasn't, but I finally realized, what am I doing? So I started batching, right? 
finally started batching. Uh, and it saves me a lot of time. And what I also like is it saves me the mental space. So it'll be three weeks out of the month. I don't have to think about making any videos because I already made them. So I'm. it's a relentless pursuit of these four things ongoing. Every year in January, sometimes in December, I sit down and I, I look at the business and I look at these four things and I say, it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning, which is, man, I know everyone's doing all the things. And trust me when I say, like, I understand all the things you could be doing in your business. I feel that pull every once in a while to be like, oh, should I be doing that? Oh, he's doing some really awesome videos that are super like high production value, lots of cool edits and B-roll. Should I be doing that? And I would, honestly, I would love to have videos that are like that. They're fun, cool music, like, but they take hours and hours. And you know what? I'm just not that interested in giving up that much time to probably not see my revenue jump at all. Maybe a little, probably not. So I've just committed to, again, what Tim Ferriss calls the minimum effective dose. Like I just wanna be effective. I just wanna do what's effective. It's not that I wanna be lazy. It's not that I wanna do the bare minimum in the negative sense of the word. I wanna be, I pride myself in, in having as maximum output as possible. The desired output doing as much as possible for the world, generating as much revenue as possible in the fewest amount of hours possible. To me, that's like good stewardship. To me, that's good management. Like, I feel like, just like you see a construction project. Have you, have you ever, you know that road that you drive on every day that's like always under construction? And like, if you're in construction, I'm not trying to pick on you, but there's some, because some construction teams are not like this. But you'll see those construction projects where you swear this has been going on for like a year or two years on this road and you haven't seen any progress. And I'm not talking about like they're they're laying pipe under the ground. I understand there's a lot of non-visible progress. I, I get that. But I mean like literally they're just like going slow and you look at all the guys on the side of the road and they're all just like checking their phones or like just snacking. And you, and you wonder like, are they really in a hurry to finish this project, they might not be. Their, their superiors might not be motivated to like finish the project quickly because they're paid by however many hours it takes. And so if they finish the project too quickly, they might not be incentivized to do that. They'll make less money and there's no guarantee of another project. To me, that's wasteful, right? I understand how they get in that situation sometimes, but isn't it wasteful to just spend a lot of hours on something just because you can? Isn't it more respectful? Isn't it more desirable to see how can I get the same result but in as few man hours as possible so we don't waste a single hour of anyone's time? Shouldn't that be elevated? Shouldn't that be prized in the marketplace? For some reason in this online space, we're all told to hustle and do more. You want to 10X your business? Do more. <laughs> That's not true. I've more than 10X my business by doing less. 10 years ago, I was making $1,000 a month working 32 hours a week, Right? Not even $1,000 a month. I made $3,000 my first year. I was looking back at my journal this weekend, right? But let's just say my second year is doing about $1,000 a month, 32 hours a week. Okay, now running in less than five hours a week, it does seven figures, okay? Or doing like over 100 grand a month. Like that's way more than 10X and I'm working way, way less. It's because A, I'm in the right line of business, which is online digital product business. I mean, if you're not in that business, you got to get in it. It's scalable. Two, even in that business, and, and many of these people are in this business, they're still under the myth of like, you just got to do more to get more. And if you're those that are willing to do the most, get the most. I think that's just an ego trip. I think those that are wisest and shrewdest and most strategic can grow just as much or at least grow enough for your goals while working far, far less. If you commit to eliminating, which is the hardest one, automating, delegating, and then batching the rest. So two things, I'd love to know, A, what you think about this. What is, of those four steps, is your biggest hangup? Are you, like most people, you just need to start eliminating and you're stuck there because you think you need to do all the things or you think that you can do all the things or your business coach or your whoever you follow on YouTube is telling you to do all the things? Like that might be where you're stuck. Don't fall for the myth and the lie of you can do all the things and you need to do all the things now. Those are both awful pieces of advice. You can't do all the things and you certainly don't need to do all of them or any of them right now, okay? There's no pressure. Um, but 
Is it that, or are you just stuck in the automation? You're trying to do everything manually? Like, is it, do you just need to automate some of your process? I know you can't automate all of it. I would love to automate everything if I could. But is there something that you need to think about automating? Maybe, and this is many of you, you're still living that solopreneur dream, which trust me, I'm, I'm such an introvert. I'm such a perfectionist. I'm like, I don't trust human beings very well. I would rather do it myself. So that's why it took me a long time to delegate and get my first hire. I'm not the guy telling you to hire, hire, hire because I don't want to do any of it. I've gotten a taste of delegation now. And so I'm grateful for it. That has been one of the biggest pieces to me freeing up my time and growing my business. But it took me a long time to get there. I was stuck on the delegation piece. That would have been me. Um, maybe you're stuck there. And maybe, like I said, you just need to hire one contractor to do one simple gig every month or every week for you. Where, what can you delegate? What one little thing can you delegate? Even if it's just for fun. Or are you doing all those three things? You're eliminating, you're automating, you're delegating, but you just need to start batching. You're still just starting and stopping. You still have things open. You're still getting pushes and notifications and you can't focus. Maybe you need to do real focused, batched effort work. Which one of those is it for you? If you're on YouTube, leave me a comment. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, leave me a review on iTunes and let me know. Hey, I love the show, by the way. So please say, I, I love the show. Graham is amazing. Say those exact things. Best podcast I've ever heard. If you say those things, I think the, the podcast gods will shower you with blessings. Um, and then let me know uh, that you're listening to this episode in particular and which of those things are you stuck at. I'd love to know. And then if you're like, poof, Graham, I'm in the wrong business, or Oof, I hadn't thought about a business that's scalable, that doesn't require me to be in it 40 hours a week. I, I just was so focused on working for myself and not somebody else. I need to know more about how this business model works. Then you, my friend, need to watch my passive income workshop. This is a 45-minute workshop. I walk you through the four steps to creating an automated income stream in your spare time. I know you're busy. I know you got stuff going on. You're not going to have a full-time business tomorrow. But if you can start to plant the seeds of these four components and you can see what tools I'm using, you can see exact scripts and templates that you can borrow and how they work together, figure out what your profitable idea is in the first place, even if you don't know what to sell, what products to build, who to sell those things to, how to find those people, how to automate this process so that you have a business that now is scalable, that yeah, it's spinning, it might require 40 hours a week, but maybe it'll only require 30 hours next year, maybe only 10 or 20. Or like many of you, you're starting it part-time. So you'll never have full-time hours devoted to it, which I almost think is better. Start it part-time, keep it part-time, but it creates full-time income. That's even cooler. So this is how the business model works. I teach it in explicit detail at my workshop. I want you to come watch it at grahamcochran.com slash workshop. Link is below the video if you're watching this on YouTube or just type in grahamcochran.com slash workshop whenever you're done listening to this and come check it out. You can listen to it. You can watch it, whatever you want to do, but it breaks down my exact business model of how I'm running the recording revolution in five hours a week or less uh, and how I'm running this business uh, and scaling it. And so it's proven, it's, it's beautiful, it's very expandable, it can look a lot of different ways, but it's, it is a great time to start this kind of business and sow the seeds of the scalable automatic income style business. And it's fun. It's fun. If you have caught the vision in this episode of, hey, I want to run my business in five hours a week, to do it. Watch the workshop and then follow the action steps inside. Even if five hours a week sounds stupidly impossible to you, that's totally fine. When I, when I poll my audience, when I poll people like you, um, and I ask, what would be a dream for you, like a dream goal for your online business? Generally speaking, you hear a couple different answers related to a few different areas. One of them obviously is money. I'd love to be making a certain amount of money um, or whatever, or replace a salary. But the other area is time. And you know, it's funny, the number I hear the most is I'd love to be working 20 hours a week business that makes all the money I need 20 hours a week. And you know what? I think 20 hours a week is super doable, super doable. My wife runs her business multiple six figures in less than 20 hours a week. She's 16 hours a week. So she's another case study and her business is even more complex than mine. Um, so 20 hours a week, I think is a beautiful goal. 
I'm a big fan of five because uh, you can do almost anything you want to do at that point. But maybe 20 hours a week is your goal. And maybe that's your goal in 12 months. Maybe that's your goal in 24 months. Either way, maybe it's your goal in five years, but why not move towards it? Why, what are you waiting for? There's no pressure to get there now. There's no, there's no rush, but certainly take some action. Take some action after this episode that moves you in that closer to that goal because it's possible, it's doable. I'm doing it, my wife's doing it, a lot of my students are doing it. You can do it, just have to take the step. So thanks for listening, thanks for being a part of the show. Again, it means a ton that you spend any amount of time with me I understand that your time is valuable and that there is a lot that you are doing, but the fact that you would spend 50 minutes with me right now is a huge honor. It means a ton. Appreciate the support. Got another amazing episode coming for you next week. How do I know? Because I've batched my episode. So stay tuned for that. Have an amazing rest of your week and I'll talk to you on another episode real soon. Mm-hmm.